Hey what is up you guys, it is your favorite YouTuber OG Polly and I'm back again with another amazing video. As you can tell by the title of this video, I'm going to be diving into my daily devotions with you guys for a few days. So I truly hope that you guys enjoy this segment in my faith content. Do let me know in the comments what you resonate with most and just overall um, if you'd like more videos like this, we're trying new things. So let's get right into the video. So the topic today is ignore distractions. So I'm going to be reading this from my devotion book and when they raised their eyes they saw no one but Jesus only this is from Matthew 17 verse 8 our own flaws can distract us from keeping our eyes on Jesus if we think too much about what is wrong with us we will forget what God can do through us if we look too much at what we lack we will forget to be thankful for what we have the Bible says to look away from all that will distract us from focusing on Jesus see Hebrews 12 verse 2 if your faith begins to waver, quickly get your eyes on Jesus, who is the source of your faith and the incentive for your belief. Remember how he endured the cross, despising and ignoring the shame of it. For the joy of winning you to himself, he promises to bring your faith to maturity and perfection. How beautiful is that? I think, you know, taking it from the very beginning where it says, um... Our own flaws can distract us from keeping our eyes on Jesus. And if we think too much about what is wrong with us, we will forget what God can do through us. First of all, I also, you know, believe that we don't even belong to ourselves for us to harshly judge ourselves all the time. You know, like we're God's possessions, we're his children and we shouldn't be so hard on ourselves, you know. And we mustn't forget that despite where we come from, despite what our circumstances look at, like myself, God doesn't call qualified people. He qualifies the call, you know, and it's our role to be obedient to his voice and to do what we're supposed to when we're called, you know. And, you know, it also says how if we look too much at what we lack, we will forget to be thankful for what we have, which is why we should always focus on the positive things in life. You know, like as difficult as times may be all the time, we mustn't forget how beautiful the world is. You know, God's creation, God's hand, you know, if the sun shines every single day, when you wake up, you open the curtains, there's light. The sun comes out, you know, all the clouds, the gray clouds come out and it rains. That is evidence that God is still here. He's still alive very well. He he hears you he hears your requests he sees the condition of the world you know but we shouldn't lose hope if the sun comes out every day night and day still happen every single day of our lives that's also just evidence to not give hope because if the sun gives hope then okay you know and that will never happen until the coming of jesus christ so the moral of the story is to never give hope give up hope you know and to be thankful for all that we have and the bible says to look away from all that will distract us from focusing on jesus and you know from a personal perspective i know that i need to take some time off of social media sometimes because it can put me in a position where i start comparing the quality of my life you know or the calling that other people have or where other people are and am i doing enough to serve god no but i'm not doing this you know and those things can really distract us from the point the main point is that you need to focus on him you know seek first his kingdom and everything will follow and you know you will be stayed in perfect peace when you're keeping your eyes on him and not on the things around you know circumstance shouldn't wave our faith because then it was fake you know we should make sure that we're not wavered by circumstance and by all means that we try to keep focus on jesus and if you know that social media is your weakness for example social media right it is your responsibility as you know a person to set boundaries you know i'm not going to open social media from this time to this time on these type of days you know those type of boundaries when i crave that app when i crave twitter i'll open a verse you know like i'll speak the truth of the bible to my flesh because the flesh lives for the things of this world the likes of social media but the spirit you know the spirit is there you know there's a verse that says you know the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak which is why we need to we need to crucify our flesh daily and pick up our cross and try our very level best to keep our eyes on jesus you know and 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 if you have to think about oh my gosh this is so difficult don't forget what he endured for you you know like it mentions we should remember how he endured the cross despising and ignoring the shame of it just that concept of despising ignoring the shame of it you know when you start living for christ it is gonna come off as you know 
people might start to persecute you and treat you funny and things start looking weird from a different perspective but when you understand what you're doing it for the same way jesus understood why he's enduring all this um shame you he died for us we have to live for him i mean i don't even want to say it's only fair but that's what love is you know and he promises to bring your faith to maturity and perfection and the only way that you can be a type of person who grows spiritually and you don't stay you know spiritually complacent that's only if you keep your eyes stayed on him there's absolutely no ways that you will grow spiritually by trying to do works yourself we're not qualified god qualifies us so yes that was the message of today let me know in the comments what your thoughts are hey guys today's word is be thankful be happy in your faith and rejoice and be glad-hearted continually be unceasing in prayer thank god in everything no matter what the circumstances may be be thankful and give thanks for this is the will of god for you who are in christ the revealer and mediator of that will do not quench suppress or subdue the holy spirit this is from 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 16 to 19. Be thankful for everything and be careful not to quench the Holy Spirit by complaining or you will lose your joy. You can be glad-hearted no matter what your circumstances are. Renew your mind to God's ideals and attitude. See Romans 12 verse 2. If you spend time in God's presence, you will think differently about yourself and about the people around you. You will have the mind of Christ and be full of his love. Deep, hey? Being thankful. And, you know, the thing that touches me the most and what I've just read from 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 16 to 19, when it says, be unceasing in prayer, meaning, you know, we need to persevere. We need to not give up. We need to continue. We need to fight to do it, you know. It gets hard sometimes to the point where you know praying is not always the first response but the last response and not something that we naturally think to do and that's because the spirit would naturally do it but the flesh probably wouldn't the flesh would probably go and complain 500 times and then think oh yes wait let me go and pray about it you know what i mean and like it mentions as well you know <clears throat> that we should not quench the Holy Spirit by complaining or we will lose our joy. And, you know, if you look at this, the fruits of the Holy Spirit, complaining is not one of them, but joy is, you know. And when we keep our minds on Jesus and when we keep trying, you know, in prayer, it doesn't get easy. But even if your prayer can go from five words, you know, and you are trying remember god knows your heart he knows your intentions he knows what you're doing he sees what you're doing and just you trying and avoiding quenching the holy spirit you know avoiding speaking a certain way speaking about certain things in a certain tone you know complaining just in general because complaining does steal our joy and you know i live on earth as well i'm very well aware that you know our circumstances every single day whether it be in the country or in the world they're not ideal and it's very easy to complain it's very easy to to find something to complain about but just like the title says we mustn't forget to be thankful because when you express your gratitude and you think about you know the greatness of who god is and you know what god does for us on a daily outside of materialistic things just his character and who he is to us and his love for us you will find very little to complain about when your mind and your vocabulary is filled with gratitude and you know thankfulness overall so i think the one thing that we can take from here is that we should always be intentional about renewing our mind to god's ideals and attitude and how can you stop this earthly attitude right and earthly ideals and earthly way of talking and complaining while well, the only way is to be in his presence and to be intentional about being in his presence you know before you read a devotion or before you pray or before you do a bible study or even attempt to read the bible pray and, you know, just in conversation, just ask God, you know, God, please help me today as I read your word. Give me the grace to understand, you know, speak to me and help me be able to apply what I'm learning in my daily life. You know, feed my spirit. Let me align with your will and let me also be able to pour into other people's life what I'm learning today as I do my devotion or as I do a Bible study, you know, all those things. It's very simple. It just starts with a first step and that first step for you could be expressing gratitude and being thankful. 
Hey guys and welcome to another day. The topic for today is discipline brings success. But if from there you will seek, inquire for, and require as necessity, the Lord your God, you will find him if you truly seek him with all your heart and mind and soul and life. And this is taken from Deuteronomy 4 verses 29. Proverbs 5 verses 23 says that a person will die for lack of discipline and instruction and in the greatness of his folly he will go astray and be lost. That doesn't necessarily mean that a person will die immediately but a lack of discipline leads toward deathly situations. In his book A Pursuit of God, A.W. Toyser said, paraphrased, that God puts a desire in us to seek him but we have to discipline ourselves to seek him. We can become too passive waiting for God to initiate a relationship with us. If you want to have a successful life, discipline yourself to seek God every day. You know the one thing I thought of when reading this was, I noticed sometimes in my comments people would ask like, how do you wake up every single day early? Or how do you consistently do your devotions and wake up every day and do your devotions? And it all comes down to discipline, you know, and being intentional. And, you know, as children of God, we have to be intentional with how we spend our time. You know what I mean? Because with the same energy that, you know, you put into watching tv for example or preparing a meal that should be the same energy that you put into seeking first his kingdom you know and being disciplined about it so how it says um you will find him if you seek him with all your heart and mind and soul and life you know you don't have to compare your way of trying to seek god with someone else's way because god knows your heart at the end of the day so when you seek him do so because you want to, not because you feel pressured to. And God will know, you know, he knows. He knows what you're going to do before you do it anyways. So he will know that his child is seeking him. And, you know, it does say also in the word that um, if you knock, the door will be open. You know what I'm saying? Like, keep on knocking, keep on knocking. And, you know, one thing that God graciously does is gift is give the gift of his Holy Spirit. He's not going to withhold it from you. He wants a relationship with you, you know, more than anything. That's something God wants with all his children. So if you're intentional about everything, you will start to feel change and you'll see it later on because I know personally, I didn't automatically feel like, oh, I'm in a relationship with God. Oh, wow, things have changed. I just realized it a while after. Please excuse the birds. And also in Proverbs 5 verses 23, it says that a person will die for lack of discipline and instruction and this just simply means that you know what leads to death is living without purpose you know we are designed to have purpose and as it also mentions that you know like we are designed to god god put a desire in us to want to actively seek him and so if you do follow the things that god puts in your heart and allow his holy spirit to lead you it will lead not only to life but because you're seeking his kingdom first he will fulfill all your earthly needs you know like there's nothing happening in the earthly realm that the spiritual realm doesn't know about or hasn't seen and to give a tip on how to be disciplined in terms of doing devotions, I know the one thing that worked for me, you can try it if you haven't once tried it. I cannot promise that it will work for you, but you know, these are, this is all for his kingdom. So by his grace, I hope it works for you as well. I know every time when I wake up in the morning before I eat, because as a foodie, I had to, you know, prioritize because the first thing I'd always want to do is, mm, what am I eating today? And so I told myself that before I feed my flesh, I need to feed my spirit. My spirit needs to eat first. And I also, you know, also thought of for every time that my flesh eats, my spirit must eat as much, you know. So if you can eat three meals a day, you can inquire and speak to God in conversation and prayer three times a day, you know. Your spirit should not be starved, you know. Like, don't suppress the Holy Spirit and also, like, feed into your relationship with God. So that's something that works for me. It does take discipline and practice. But if you, you know, pray about it, Lord, please help me every single day. I want to wake up and do my devotions before I eat or touch my phone or do this or do that. And, yeah, like, just try because if you pray about it and don't try it's not gonna you know faith is dead without works so from your side put your effort in and by his grace you will see the rewards of it and you will get disciplined in routine today's word is balanced life blessed is the man whom you discipline and instruct 
O Lord, and teach out of your law, that you may give him power to keep himself calm in the days of adversity. This is taken from Psalm 94 verses 12 to 13. A person who is lazy and passive is not happy. A passive person is someone who wants something good to happen, but who just sits still and waits to see if it does. Successful people live disciplined lives. 1 Peter 5, 8 says, Be well balanced, temperate, sober-minded, be vigilant and cautious at all times. The devil would like you to go overboard in some area, but stay steady and God will himself complete and make you what you ought to be, established and ground you securely and strengthen and settle you. I think this is so important just as a general aspect of life itself being balanced you know being having a balanced life is very important and I think balance is the one thing that got me through school the way that I got through it because when I do think back on goodness how did I even do this because I was surely juggling a lot of things and the thing I learned was discipline and balancing my schedule you know and I can definitely attest to the fact that balance is key in life and it is definitely key in this context yeah God gives us power to keep ourselves calm in the days of adversity it is by his grace that we can get through storms you know we the lord will bless us with peace of mind you know the prince of peace is always availing his peace to us when we stay with him when we have him in the middle of our situations you know you know biblically it also does mention that um we will have problems here on earth you know we will go through trials and adversity and everything but through Jesus we will have peace when we go through those trials and problems so being um you know Christian being a child of God being a disciple this isn't exempt you from having problems and suffering it just means that God's with you when you go through it you know what I mean and a person who is lazy and passive is not happy and that's the truth because if you live in la la land and want results but don't work for them you will not be happy you know so you cannot be lazy and daydream you need to be daydreaming and working for that dream you know what i mean and it does say a passive person is someone who wants something good to happen but just sits and wait for it to happen you know you know it even says in the bible that faith is dead without works you cannot hope and pray for something and not effectively put your foot forward and work as well you know everything works well together you need to give enough prayer and enough work for things to work according to god's will and successful people live disciplined lives it is very true you know like we mentioned yesterday you know we spoke about um discipline bringing success and ultimately happiness you know in peter 5 verses 8 it says you know be vigilant and sober-minded that's very important because if you are living a balanced life you give enough time to everything you don't overdo something or underdo something because it's where you leave a crack in the lack of balance where the devil prowls you know he doesn't sleep his eyes are are open and he's looking for where to dis, you know cause chaos and destroy your life because he only comes to kill steal and destroy and so if you live a balanced life and you are grounded and you're steady you wouldn't be leaving you wouldn't ultimately be leaving space to the enemy to come and dominate in a certain department so if i am you know trying to do my best at something but all i do is think about how i will achieve it or the fact that i want to achieve it but i don't actively try to achieve it so put the work in for it and i end up becoming lazy and complacent you know the enemy will prowl in that department of my life in me being lazy because ultimately god's purpose cannot be accomplished because all i do is sit and laze around you know so the devil would be winning because i'm feeding into this lazy spirit that this devil that the devil is now going to let shadow my life you know so if you are suffering from something along those lines you know laziness as much as i would recommend you to pray about it take affirmative action as well make a plan on how you're going to get out of lazy behavior lazy attitude pray about it make a routine that will get you out of it baby steps are better than no steps you know and you know as it says god himself 
will complete and make you what you ought to be establish and ground you secu um, securely and strengthen and settle you this just means that with god all things are possible and things float you know and just because you're living a balanced life it doesn't also exempt you from having problems you know things do go wrong in this world and it is natural we live in a fallen world things are gonna fall out of place but even when things don't go as we plan we need to make sure that you know we keep our mind stayed on Christ. You know, God is the same whether things go away or things don't go away. And we just need to always remember that, you know. So live a balanced life, guys.